BS advice on how you can become a full-time working artist. In this episode, I want to talk to you about why selling art is one of the worst business models out there and what you can do as an artist to be able to improve that business model and what you need to focus on. So first of all, why is selling art the worst business model out there or one of the worst? Um, And the answer is because you're not actually developing a business as such when you're working as a full-time artist. Now, I know that there's some artists who crack the market and they become flavor of the month, they become very popular and they sell a lot of work for high prices and they make a lot of money. Um, And that's certainly a reality within the art world, right? And and also if you're a dead old master, you know, your paintings become worth a lot of money. So there's two real sort of markets that make a lot of money, dead old masters, but who wants to be one of them? Well, certainly not now, right? And then the other market is the current hot, trendy, you know, whatever's flavor of the month and, and um, whoever's selling well. And, and they seem to be the two distinct markets where people make a lot of money as an artist. Now, it's, nobody wants to be a dead old master until your time's up and getting into that top 1% of artists who crack the market and become flavor of the month is extremely challenging. It takes time and persistence and effort. So that leaves the rest of us, you know, the other 98% of artists out there, you and me, and uh, how do we then figure out a way to create a full-time income through our artwork, okay? And there's lots of different ways to do that, which I'm gonna explore with you in in these videos. Um, But for the vast majority of artists, making art and selling it is not actually a good business model. The reason is you create a piece of artwork, and I was at a conference, um, a few weeks ago where one of the artists there said it takes her up to 40 hours to produce a piece of art, right? Um, that means if she was working full-time all week, she could produce, you know, one piece of artwork a week, which is 50 pieces a year. And uh, unless she's selling them for a significant amount of money, uh, that's not a good business model, right? That's probably not going to work in the long term, let's face it. So why do I say making art is not a good business model? It's because we create things, we create a product, but then we immediately turn around and sell that product. And we get the money for that product that we've just sold. And then what do we do? We spend that, you know, pay the rent, um, invest it in more art supplies and so on. And we're then back to square one. We're back to the same place we're at before we made that piece of work. So if you just keep repeating that cycle over, yes, you'll have cash flow, but you won't build any assets in your business. And successful businesses, those that go on and become successful, whether it's in the art world or not, uh, are the ones who build assets as they go, right? Assets can be leveraged and monetized ongoing into the future, okay? So look at you know Apple as an example. Um, Steve Jobs created the iPhone. The, the technology and the intellectual property around the iPhone is an asset that they've been able to leverage, you know, for, what is it, nearly two decades now, if you go back to the iPod, right? So the, the what they actually created within that business was a product that could be leveraged for income over and over and over and continually improving upon that. So they've got an asset base that they create, their product suite, the intellectual property behind that and their loyal customer base becomes an asset uh, or a pool of assets that they can continue to leverage for income ongoing. Okay, now Apple's at the other end of the market. They're a massive, one of the biggest companies in the world, one of the most recognised brands. If we bring that back to what the average artist does, we don't spend any time at all investing in building assets and creating assets that we can leverage on an ongoing basis and continuing to earn income from this. So I think very differently from most artists, I, I, I assume, because I came from a business background and I already had these thoughts about how to build a business. Um, you know, Building assets is a key part of building a business. So when I decided I was going to become a full-time artist, you know, the first thing I looked at was what are the different ways to build assets? 
And I looked at all the other artists that I know, and nearly all of them were in this mode of creating artwork and marketing it and selling it, getting the money, and then having to repeat that cycle. You never break out of that cycle. Now, the problem with that is you could be popular today, but not so popular five years time, right? So you could build up a solid income stream producing artwork and selling it. But then in five years time, you, you, your style of art or you might go out of fashion, out of vogue. Now, this happens all the time. It, it, it's a very dynamic market, the art world market. So I know a number of artists who were very successful in the 80s. Um, their particular style of artwork was in vogue back then. And uh, they did very well in the 80s, but have never been able to repeat that level of sales since. Uh, but they haven't morphed their business model beyond creating a piece of art and selling it, right? Um, so what that means is their income was up in the 80s, but then as, they, uh, as the style of art went out of fashion and other things became more fashionable, uh, their income just disappeared, basically. So had they taken a different approach, which is about building assets, uh, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment how you do that, then despite the ups and downs of the popularity of their particular type of art, they could have still leveraged those assets into the future um, ongoing and through different ways. So I recognized this when I first decided to become an artist. And so I decided to put some effort into selling my own artwork, but not to make that my main stream of income. So I'll give you an example, right? One of the things that I do on a weekly basis is I produce a teaching video, um, which we call Learn to Paint TV. And I have a, a short version and then the full length version of that. And every week I film that an episode of that uh, program. And then I sell the full length version. So here's this week's version, right? It's a little simple little barn in a landscape setting. And um, I aim at beginner intermediate market and I film myself painting that. So here's the difference with what most artists do. Most artists will go and do a painting like that, and then they'll put it up for sale and hope to sell it. And when they sell it, let's say they got $500 for it, when they sell it, they get the money, but then they're back to the same starting position they were in before they painted it, right? Um, whereas the approach that I've taken is building an asset. So I film myself doing that and talking through the process. I can still sell the painting, but now I've got a digital asset, a video recording of me f creating this painting. I can sell that video over and over and over again. It becomes an asset in my business, right? Sure, I can go and sell a painting. I'll get paid for it one time. Uh, but the actual filming of me teaching it is something I'll get paid for, you know, perhaps for as long as I want to, I guess. Um, Again, things will come in and out of fashion and, and so on, but there's always a market for people wanting to learn how to paint. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm building up an asset base and the bigger that asset base has got and the better the quality, because I didn't start out knowing how to film and teach and everything at the very beginning. It took me a while to learn that, but the bigger that asset base has become, the bigger my income has become. And the, the more that's grown, the more freedom I've had to, to be able to explore you know, being a full-time artist. And I'll talk more about that in another video. But the important point is asset creation, right? So you can either get paid once for a painting that you do, or you can think about different ways you can turn that painting into an asset and get paid multiple times. Now, the obvious one that comes to artists is prints, right? I'll get prints made up of my original and I'll keep the original and I'll sell the prints. And there's some merit to that. I mean, there, you know, if you build up a, a library of high quality and, and you may not be able to create that quality yourself, you may have to go to a professional photography studio and get them to create high quality images of your best pieces. Those images become assets in your business. And then you can leverage those through different channels, right? So you could then create prints off those in different sizes and have them framed, you know, so through a service like Fine Art America or others, right? Prints is one way. The other way is to then license that image to corporates who want to use your image on their products. So there's licensing is another way to leverage that asset. And then the third way is merchandise, right? So um, there's a lot of artists around. Ken Doan, the Australian artist, um, which as soon as you mention that name, it divides the art world, right? Um, but, you know, hey, what a great example of an artist who went out and took the images that he created and didn't just sell them once, he turned them into assets that he could leverage for income stream over and over and over again. Now there's artists out there who will say, yeah, but Roddy wasn't a true artist at all. Forget all that, right? I mean, that's just 
such limited thinking. You know, as soon as you mention the name Thomas Kincaid or Wyland to artists or Bob Ross, if you're a real artist, you know, you immediately want to vomit. And if that's you, then I've got news for you. Your mind is too limited around being a real artist and a purist in, in the art sense. Um, and, and I'm talking to those people who want to become full-time working artists, right? So this message is for you. You need to open your mind up to possibility. Now, sure, you may not have liked Thomas Kincaid's style of artwork, but forget that for one moment and look at the way he created a business around his artwork and became apparently quite successful in doing that, worth millions of dollars. Now, you may not want to be worth millions of dollars. Forget the details, but look at the model. Okay, so if you're an artist who produces work, tries to sell it, gets paid, and has to repeat that process over and over, what happens when you get sick, right? And don't say it's never going to happen to you, you're bulletproof. People do have interruptions in their life where their productivity drops. And if you're an artist who relies solely on producing and selling artwork, and your productivity drops, your, your income drops, right? So the way to avoid that is to think about every piece of work that you do, how do I turn it into an asset? Okay. I've turned my artwork into assets via teaching and creating videos and, and distributing those online. Some of them for free, some of them for paid, right? Um, I still get paid for courses that I made five or six years ago. I still did the same you know, painting that we, what you're going to do, you're going to do a painting this week. Well, I did a painting five years ago and I filmed myself doing it and created a little course around it. And that became an asset based on my artwork. And so my artwork is now paying me on an ongoing basis every day, every week, every month for work that I did five years ago, right? Now, I'm not saying that for you to say oh, I wasn't right grade or whatever or to try and brag. I'm saying it because I want you to start thinking like a business person. If you're an artist and you want to become a full-time artist, you're in the art business. If you're in the art business, you need to think like a business person as much as an artist. You need to wear two hats, right? Or partner with a business-minded person, um, which I don't necessarily recommend, but it's a solution if you just can't get your head around the business side. So I'm sharing this information with you because I want you to start thinking like a business person. A serious entrepreneur and a business person, the first thing they think about is how do I create an asset that I can leverage for income ongoing into the future, right? I mean, look at Bob Ross, Bill Alexander, what they did, okay? Neither of them were the greatest artists in the world, right? I'm not the greatest artist. There's better artists out there. But as far as business model goes, you know, Bill Alexander started the business model where he had a way of teaching his art to people and he sold his art. You know, he'd go around to shopping centers and set up pop-up art exhibitions and things and, and paint live. So he would sell a lot of artwork. But what he recognized was that Exactly what I've been describing to you here. It's not a good business model because as soon as you run out of that piece of artwork, you have to create more. You only get paid for each painting one time, right? Not a good business model. So what did Bill Alexander do? He was interested in teaching as well and started teaching classes to people because he had a particular approach that appealed to people. Um, but those people that he'd have in his classroom, they needed paints, brushes, canvases, and so on. So he started to supply that to them and he got into the art supply business with his own branding, right? So that's an asset base that he created. His teaching method was an asset base and his branded art supplies were assets in his business that are still being leveraged today for income by um, people who run the Alexander organization. Same with Bob Ross. Now Bob partnered with a very smart business uh, person and they replicated Bill's business and they took it to a higher level, but it was all based around asset production, right? So they'd have the weekly TV show, that became DVDs. They produced books. So every painting that they did on the TV show also went into the books and became a DVD, and um, they sold the art supplies to be able to replicate that painting, right? So he was, he was leveraging each painting in multiple different ways for multiple streams of income, and we'll talk about that in another video. But what I want you to think about is, instead of just doing an art, a piece of artwork and then selling it and getting paid one time, how can you start to take your artwork and turning it into assets, right? Um, this is the real key. Now, it's, the art business is it's challenging to do that. There's a number of very clear paths that you can take, and I've described most of those in this video already. But what I'd like to hear from you is in the comments, tell us, are you currently turning your artwork into assets? 
And if so, how are you doing it? We'd love to get a conversation going around different ideas so we can share with each other. And I've shared with you the ones that I'm pursuing. Um, obviously, I love teaching, um, which is why I'm doing this video. So for me, it makes sense to pop my mobile phone up on a tripod and talk my way through the painting as I'm doing it. I can still sell a painting. I could do prints and things of the better ones. I could merchandise. I could license the images. And I can sell the videos on how to do that painting multiple times, right? So I have an asset that I'm developing in my business. And everything I do as an artist in, in the art business is all around asset creation. And you need to start thinking like that, right? Because you can't sustain an art business based purely on just selling work. My name's Rod Moore, this is The Art Biz Show, and I hope that's helped. Talk to you next week.